Dublin is quite easy because I have a constant sensory information. However, it would be a lot harder if I had diminished hand sensations. Now I'd like you to imagine trying to ride a bike and not being able to detect the grip. Imagine the fear of falling you would face, not being able to um, perceive that contact with the bike and that point of support. That forms the basis of this project. An athlete with multiple cirrhosis that's the target for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics um, has reduced hand sensation because of her disease and as a result an increased fear of falling that she believes negatively impacts her ability to perform. Multiple cirrhosis is an autoimmune progressive disease which affects 2.2 million people globally and over 21,000 Australians. There are a range of symptoms, however 80% of people do experience sensory deficits. In order for a sensation to be perceived by someone, three things must happen. Firstly, there has to be detection of the stimuli at the local level, so by the mechanoreceptors. Secondly, that signal must transmit along the length of the ascending neural pathways. However, for people with MS, these ascending neural pathways become degraded due to implement, implementation sorry, and also um, demyelination of the neurons. As a result of that, less somatosensory information reaches the cortex, and so the individual has less information in order to interpret and hence perceive the um, functionality. For this project, what I wanted to do was determine what sensations are changing for the athlete and how is the athlete responding to that. And secondly, based on these results, how can the athlete's um, experience be improved through a customised degree? In order to do this, three somatosensory tests were undertaken by the athlete pre and post training across five different training sessions. They were a two point discrimination test in order to determine the athlete's spatial acuity or spatial resolution. Secondly, a SEMS Weinstein monofilament test in order to determine their pressure detection threshold. And lastly, a distal joint proprioception test. The athlete also completed a maximum force grip. And when they were doing that, they wore three surface EMG sensors in order to monitor the muscle activity on their ECRL, ECRB, and FDS. These sensors then remained in place as the athlete trained. After they completed their training session, the somatosensory and maximum force grip test was repeated, and the athlete also completed a questionnaire. And this provided us with an insight into the athlete's own experience. What you see on the board for the moment is the um, athlete's median pressure detection score. So I'll just walk you through it. So this is the rested blue and fatigue score for her left and right thumb. Index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. There's two things that we need to point out with this data. Firstly, the athlete's experience was very varied, and you can see that through the range bars. Secondly, the highest score that the athlete ever attained was six, which clinically means reduced, um, sorry, diminished protective sensation. For a healthy individual, would expect a score of 10. So you can see they do have quite a diminished sensation. Based on these results, we're able to predict the rest of the athlete's hand, and that's based on the density of specific mechanoreceptors and the sensory territories. And as the athlete fatigues, we do see a notable change. This was also, a similar process was also carried out for spatial acuity. Um, and for a healthy individual, we would expect a resolution between two and three millimetres at the fingertips. However, the athlete never received above six again. What's interesting to note is that some locations, their ability actually increased as they fatigued. And this becomes really important when we consider the design considerations later on. Proprioception was also undertaken. However, proprioception is a really complex somatosensory modality and it depends on both the ascending and descending neural pathways rather than just the density of mechanoreceptors. As a result, it can't be extrapolated across the hand. However, you do see a clear difference as the athlete fatigues. By combining the, special, the spatial acuity sorry, and the pressure discrimination, we're then able to extrapolate across the whole hand to give us an insight into what the athlete's actually experiencing. So here, the colour relates to the spatial acuity or the spatial resolution, whereas the intensity of the colour relates to the pressure. And what you can see is the athlete barely has any sensations across the palmar surface of their hand, however, their fingertips do remain innovated. Statistical analysis was also undertaken, however, very limited statistically significant results were found, and that was true even as the um, confidence interval was dropped to 90%. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, we saw the highly varied results from earlier, and that was true across all somatosensory modalities. Secondly, this is a customised project, so only one athlete was considered, and data was only collected across five training sessions, so as a result, a type 2 error can't be ruled out. 
However, whilst there was limited statistically significant results, there were clinically significant effects felt by the athlete. So at three of the tri five training sessions, they felt that they did have altered hand sensations and this negatively impacted their ability to perform. But what is actually happening to their grip as they're cycled? To do this, over 27.5 million EMG data points were collected and a very small portion of them you see on the screen currently. Whilst there is still a small portion, there's still a lot of data. If we consider just the first start across four trials, two things become a bit clearer. Firstly, there is not a clear trend in either increasing or decreasing their sensation, their um, grip, sorry. And secondly, it has a very regular cyclic pattern and this is comparable across the trials, which means that the athlete's muscle recruitment is really similar even if you break them up by 20 minutes. In order to assess the correlation between muscle recruitment and grip strength, neural networks was employed. Um, so here, the, EM, the neural nets was trained with the EMG data collected as the athlete performed the maximum force grip pre and post training. Um, 70 different networks were created for both the left and right hand individually, and they did show good stability across them. They also showed a very strong positive correlation, sorry, to the, um, I'll just go back, to the summated normalized EMG data, which is what you see currently. And this means that there is a strong correlation between the muscle recruitment and her grip force. Statistical analysis was then undertaken of the muscle recruitment, and it was found that there was no statistically significant change in grips in muscle recruitment, and hence grip strength as the athlete fatigued. Except in one session where the muscle recruitment actually increased, which means that the athlete was actually gripping onto the handlebar tighter. What this means for the athlete is even though they do have a lack of perception, they are not losing functional ability, which is really important in moving into the design phase. So with the design phase, what we now want to do is try to increase the amount of somatosensory information available to the athlete through the known and viable somatosensory modalities to hopefully improve their perception. So in literature, it's been reported that soles textured with the tetrahedral pyramidal insole can improve the gait um, and balance parameters of individuals with MS. A similar design is proposed here for a handlebar sleeve. However, the tetrahedral peaks are customised for the athlete. So here the peak to peak separation is based on the athlete's spatial acuity and the peak height is based on the athlete's pressure detection. And a resulting map across the athlete's hand for the um, texturized surface looks somewhat like this. We're also able to um, customize the grip based on the athlete's own imprint. So a 3D scan was undertaken of the athlete's imprint inflator, which is what you see on the board currently. So firstly, this improves the sorry, increases the amount of contact surface area between the athlete and the handlebar, and as a result, more mechanoreceptors will be targeted. Secondly, it also allows for mechanical features to be employed. So the image that you see to the far left is of a hand cyclist that also has a neuropathy, and what they found was by introducing such lip, it reduced their reliance on their grip strength. A similar process is also um, proposed here with that little nodule. In moving forward, it's believed that by implementing these designs, the perception of the athlete of their handlebar grip can be increased and therefore their fear of falling will be reduced. As the 2020 Tokyo Olympics are fast approaching, it's believed that such a change will improve the athlete's performance and therefore hopefully improve their chance of bringing home gold. Thank you. Mm -hmm.